Art Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of fantasy. Inner Sanctum Mystery. Lights out. Welcome, weirdos. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Retro Radio, old-time radio in the dark, presented by Weird Darkness. Each week I bring you a show from the golden age of radio, but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you're already a member of this weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen in with you. Spreading the word about the show helps it to grow. If you're here because you're already a fan of nostalgic audio and print, you'll want to email WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. When you do that, you'll get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows for free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. Coming up, it's an episode from Creeps by Night. Creeps by Night is a rare horror series hosted by the spooky great man of horror himself, Boris Karloff in Los Angeles, and the anonymous and equally spooky Dr. X on the East Coast. Opening with the dark and ominous organ music, the show occasionally starred horror darling Peter Lorre, along with Bella Lugosi, Raymond Massey, and Basil Rathbone but it was Karloff who regular listeners expected to hear as host to the proceedings. It was about the only part of the show that was predictable. Some episodes featured typical horror gimmicks, but with a twist ending that provided a new dimension to an otherwise common theme. As Karloff himself said, there is no greater mystery than the mystery of the mind. True to his word, many of the shows dealt with psychological rather than literal horror. The print ads for this series certainly go all out on the hyperbole. One reads, Warning! Persons suffering from heart trouble and those whose blood has a tendency to curdle and hair to uncurl under the stress of great excitement are urged not to listen. The station disclaims all responsibility for the health of those who insist on hearing this thriller. Well, at least you can't say you weren't warned. Creeps by Night promised all this and more. They told listeners to expect Karloff each week, along with other well-known Hollywood stars. They also promised new, original stories that were going to be written by the leading writers in the industry. However, the Blue Network didn't advertise properly and started failing to deliver on its goals. Neither the upcoming stories nor the upcoming stars were advertised in advance. To make matters worse, the writers didn't receive any on-air credit either. Karloff stopped hosting after the twelfth episode, and the unknown Dr. X hosted the final four episodes, voiced by at least two different people. It all unraveled from there. Yet the surviving episodes are quite solid and make fans regret the loss of such a promising series. It's a sober reminder that success in the entertainment business takes more than good scripts and good actors. It also takes good promotion and a good deal of luck. Tonight, it's the story The Hunt. What kind of creature rips out the throat of its prey? Could it be a werewolf? Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness as we listen to Creeps by Night, originally broadcast May 9, 1944, with The Hunt. Bring you creep by night. The Blue Network presents the international star of stage and screen, 
the mastery of Mr. A. Boris Karloff in Creep by Night. How do you do? This is Boris Karloff joining with you once again for another exploration into the unknown darkness of the human mind. Tonight, our story illustrates in terrifying terms the oft-repeated theme of this program. There is no mystery greater than the mystery of the mind. It is for you to decide whether these weird and ghastly happenings a figment of man's imagination or a tragic reality beyond man's understanding. Creep by Night presents Boris Karloff as Loomis Horton in The Hunt. Our scene is the Horton Farm, 50 acres of rich grazing pasture almost on the edge of the Louisiana bayous. The legendary swampland that for centuries was the spawning ground of black magic and voodoo. The night is warm and dark, with heavy silence broken only by the hum of insects, the chirping of crickets, and the occasional deep-throated croak of a bullfrog off in the swamp. Suddenly, the shadowed outline of a human figure appeared at the edge of a cypress grove behind the weather-beaten Horton house, and a soft, whistled signal rides the still night air. For a long moment, there is no response. Then, a door at the rear of the house opens quietly, and a girl crosses to the cypress grove, her eyes searching the darkness. Yes? Right here, Julie. Jeff, you shouldn't have come. He didn't want his black moods tonight. I've got to go right back in. He'll kill me if he finds me here. He won't kill nobody. I'm getting fed up with him ruining your life, Julie. Got a mind to tell him a thing or two. It won't do any good, Jeff. What rights he got keeping you from getting some fun out of living? That's what I want to know. He's my brother. That don't give him no right to pin you up. You ain't one of his stinking sheep. Jeff, please, not so loud. He'll hear you. I don't much care if he does. Please, Jeff. I'll be the one to suffer. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie. When it makes me mad clean through when I think of him treating me the way he does. I want to marry you, Julie, and take you away from here. The story's going around the village. What do you mean, Jeff? I don't like to say it, Julie, but uh, the folks are talking about your brother Loomis. Talking? I don't understand. Well, Buck Peebley and Bill Mason come through here night four last hunting coon. Said they saw Loomis out in the east pasture, digging a grave. A grave? Yeah. She's burying something. You know what it was, Julie? Got any idea? No. I don't, Jeff. Of what? Oh, I shouldn't be telling you this. Yes. It won't go no further, Julie. Promise. Hope to die. Well, I... I heard Loomis talking with the hired man. I heard him say something comes out of the swamp at night. Out of the swamp? Yes. They don't know what it is. But come dark, Loomis hardly never goes without his shotgun. <sighs> Sound like voodoo to me, Julie. I've got to take you away from here. It ain't healthy. Oh, you can't, Jeff. Not till I'm 18. Not for two months yet. How am I going to sit around for two months thinking about you shut up in a house with that crazy man? You've got no right to say that, Jeff. I've got every right. Digging graves at night. Burying Lord knows what. And talking about things coming out of the swamp. I ought to say something to him about all this. You can say it right now. Oh. Uh, Eden, Mr. Horton. Get back into the house, Julie. Hold on a minute, Mr. Horton. Get into the house. I'm going, Loomis. Bye, Jeff. Julie, wait. Let her go. You got no right treating her like you do. I got a right to do as I please. She's my sister and she's underage. Now get off my land and don't come back. If I catch you here again, I'll horse with you. I don't scare easy, Mr. Orton. No. Perhaps I got something in the house that may change your mind. I'll give you five minutes to get off my land. I'll leave when I'm good and ready and not before. I'm going back indoors for a shotgun. And if you're still here when I come out again, you'll get a load of buckshot. Remember that. Dirty low-down skunk. 
Just let me catch him once off his own land. Just once. I'll beat his ugly head off. What's that? Sounds like a wolf. Well, there ain't no wolves out here. No. There ain't wolf out here. Come out. Come closer. I'm sneaking through the tackle store. I wonder what it is. Maybe I better... There's not much I can tell you, Professor Taylor, except that it happened five weeks ago. The state police moved in on the case right after the boy's body was found. Frankly, we didn't get very far. It's still an unsolved mystery. I see. Uh, you don't know, of course, why I'm here, Sergeant. Well, all I know is we had a letter from the state university saying you were coming down to do some research on the case. Yes, yes, exactly. Now, as I understand it, Sergeant, uh, the boy's throat was considerably lacerated. Worse than that. There wasn't any throat left. You're convinced it was an animal. Well, what else could it be? No human could let the throat open like that. Were there any tracks? No, and the ground was pretty hard. And what stopped this cold was our bloodhound couldn't pick up a trace of scent. No animal scent anyhow. Well, how about human? Well, only the Hortons and the hired man, Andrew. They don't count. The thing happened on Horton land, so naturally you'd expect it. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, tell me, uh, this Horton you mentioned... Uh, Loomis Horton, his name is. Uh, does he keep a dog... A savage dog? No, we won't allow one on the place. We investigated the dog angle, but there uh, isn't one like that in the whole parish. Uh, curious. Very curious. Uh, where is the Horton Farm located, Sergeant? About seven miles out of town. County Road. Did the boy live or work there? No, no. According to Horton's story, Jeff thought it was strong on young Julie. Uh, she's Horton's sister. Jeff left about 9.30, and a few minutes later, Horton heard him screaming for help. Horton ran out the back of the house, found Jeff at the edge of a cypress grove. Still in bed. Mm-hmm. I'd like a little talk with this Horton, uh, Sergeant. Well, I don't know. He's a queer duck. Doesn't take much to strangers. And doesn't take much to anybody, as a matter of fact. Really? No, he puts in most of his time looking after his farm and his sheep. Keeps one hired man. Between the two of them, they manage pretty well. Then there's his young sister, the girl Jeff Tuttle was calling on. He doesn't let her out of his sight. Keeps pretty much cooped up in the house. Uh, nice looking girl, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, would it be possible to drive out to the Horton farm tonight, Sergeant? Let's see. Uh, ten minutes to eight. It'll be dark by the time we get there. Well, you're not afraid of the dark, are you? I'm not afraid of anything I can see. Let's go. Let's go. Much farther, Sergeant? Well, about a mile. Professor, look at that. Look at what? They're ahead crossing the road. Is that a dog? It's good. A grief. Speed up, Sergeant. Hurry before it's gone. Look how the eyes gleam in our headlights. A yellow fire. That dog is the biggest one I ever saw. I'm afraid it's no dog, Sergeant. Quick, swing to the left. Keep your lights on it. There. Ah, you notice anything? Starting to run, heading for the Cypress Grove. Yes, but notice the color, that peculiar gray. It's gone. And the fangs, the pointed ears, the way it moved. Didn't it remind you of a wolf? Let's go after it. Uh, no, no, no. Wait, Sergeant. No use. Not in this darkness. We never find it in that thick grove. Uh, yes, you're right. You really think it was a wolf? I said it reminded me of one. Well, we don't we don't have wolves in this section, Professor. No, yes, yes, I know. Uh, Sergeant, I think it's time I told you the kind of research I intend doing. Uh, do you know what lycanthropy is? Uh, no, I can't say I do. Well, it's a form of madness, a disease of the mind. Those who are afflicted with it imagine they've turned into wild animals. Uh. They develop a taste for blood and often commit violence when the spasm seizes them. Once the seizure is over, they return to normalcy with no knowledge of what occurred. Sounds pretty horrible. Yes, it is horrible. You understand there's no physical change except the deepening of the voice, as far as we know. Uh, what do you mean? 
far as you know. Well, some authorities believe the disease may be so deeply rooted in certain human beings that when a spasm seizes them, their actual physical appearance is altered. They take on the form as well as the habits of wild beasts. They are called werewolves. Men who turn into wolves. Well, well what's the matter, Sergeant? Why did you jump? It uh, just kind of hit me. Bloodhounds not finding any animal scent, and, and, and that gray thing we just saw run across the room. Uh, we mustn't leap to conclusions, Sergeant. No true werewolf has ever been found, although there are many alleged eyewitness accounts claiming that such creatures have been seen, particularly in the Balkan countries of Europe. Thus far, though, we have no positive scientific proof that werewolves really exist. Uh -huh. Hope they don't. So do I, Sergeant. I devoutly hope so. That's the case of this young man whose throat was uh, torn out presents some aspects I'd like to investigate. I'm uh, beginning to see what you're thinking about. I suggest we drive on to the Horton Farm, Sergeant. <laughs> Uninvited visitors. Uh, of course, Mr. Horton. It isn't my intention. And another thing. I own the property from the county road to the bayou and north to Kurt Schultz's pasture. If you took the time to notice, the land's posted. Now, this is a warning. The next person, man, woman, or child who sets foot on my land is going to get a load of buckshot. Is that clear? You're in a bad humor tonight, Horton. Never mind my bad humor. Get out. Both of you. Get out and stay out. Lovers, what's the matter? Why are you shouting? Julie, what are you doing in the kitchen? Didn't I tell you to stay up in your room? But, Mr. I... Don't how you dare come down that rear stairway with my back turned. I just wanted to find out if you'd asked Andrew about my land. How many were killed? Get up and your room around. Go and Lovers, don't be angry. I uh, presume that was your sister, Mr. Horton? Lovely girl. Good night, gentlemen. Get off my property and don't come back unless you're invited. I'm sorry, Professor. Huh? Looks like we're being asked to leave. Oh, it's it? quite all right. Yes, Thank you anyway, Mr. Horton. Perhaps some other evening you'll grant me a few minutes of your time. Uh, now you know what sort of a job we had with him. I must say, he isn't very sociable. Yeah, watch the step. They're not too solid. Oh, yeah. His sister doesn't resemble him in the least. Oh, you're rather pretty. You hear how he screamed at us? Yes. Poor child. Might as well head back to town, I guess. Horton didn't rise to your bait when you mentioned werewolves, so looks like a hunt will be the next best thing. A hunt, Sergeant? Yes. Get a bunch of men together and beat the cypress groves for that, that animal we saw crossing the road. Might even risk going into the swamp. Wolf or whatever it is, I won't be satisfied unless killed. I'm afraid I feel the same way, Sergeant. But before you organize a hunt, I wonder if it's safe to do a little snooping around here first. 
What do you mean? Something the girl said disturbed me. Something about lambs being killed. That's right. She did say she wanted to know if Horton's hired man had told him how many of her lambs were killed. Yes. And that may be significant. Werewolves are supposedly fond of slaughtering sheep. Uh, do you think we might talk with the hired man? Chances are he's over in the barn. He's got a room there built out of a horse stall. Mm-hmm. Take a look. Uh, might be a good idea. It's over this way. Keep an eye out for Horton. He may come gunning for us. I don't trust him. Uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. Men who rant and roar are rarely dangerous. Wait a minute, Pat. Hold up. What is it? Somebody's hiding behind that bush on your left. All right. Come up with your hands up or I'll shoot. Want you, Sergeant? Sign your flashlight, Mr. President. Yes, yes, sir. Man. What? Andrew. Hired man. I ain't done nothing. Oh, it's I ain't. Why were you hiding behind that bush? I, I got scared. I heard voices in, in the gravel. What were you doing out here? Burying the sheep and the lambs. What was that? Since when do you bury sheep and lambs? Well, these got to be. Mr. Holton said so. They run afoul of the critter. What critter? Only the Lord knows. We got strange goings on around here. Mighty strange. Always said it was too close to the bayou. Tain't healthy. Them swamps is full of things. Uh, where are you burying the sheep, Andrew? Right over there. Put them in the truck guard, Mr. Horton said. Good and deep. Uh, let's have a look at them, Sergeant. All right. See? There they are. Four ewes and two of Miss Julie's baby lambs. All with their throats torn out. Yeah. It's the critter from the swamps. Same one got Jeff Tuttle. Uh, when did this happen, Andrew? Mm, when the lambs got took night before last. We lost three ewes on Sunday and one last night. Has it ever happened before? Been going on most two years. Not regular, though. Oh, months will go by and the critter don't show up. I took a shot at him once, it did. When was this? Last spring. Seen him behind the pump house. About to scare me half to death. The way his eyes glowed like the swamp fire. Wasn't time to draw no bead. Missed him, I guess. What did he look like, Andrew? Couldn't tell. Too dark. All I seen was his eyes glowing yellow. Might have been a sheep killing collar, though. Uh, one of them wild ones. Uh, I very much doubt it. Uh, you're thinking of what we saw on the road tonight, uh, Professor? That uh, animal, whatever it was. Yes. If it was an animal. Why do you say that? Just look at these dead sheep. See where I'm flashing my light? Their back legs, eh? An ordinary animal would have nipped the legs and torn at their rumps. There's not a mark on them, except that their throats. Somebody's coming. Gravel's crunching. Must be Horton. Back behind the bush, Professor. We don't want him to catch us here. Don't say anything, Andrew. Keep low. Here comes. Right. Passed right on by the bush. How long is it going to take you to get those carcasses buried? All night? It ain't too easy in the dark. It's too better with the landing. I told you, no light. Hand me the other spade. I'll help you. Start shoveling. Hmm. Kind of like a shame to be putting good meat underground. How many times must I tell you it isn't good meat? Poison. Don't look poison. I say it is. And I'm warning you, shut your mouth about it. You hear that, Sergeant? Yes. I'm going to try to sneak back to the house and talk to the girl. You better come with me. All right. Keep down and follow the path, but stay off the gravel. I've got a hunch we're going to uncover something tonight. Yes. Perhaps more than we realize. Don't let him find you here. Now, don't worry about us, Julie. We want to help you. Why does your brother keep you locked in the house? He says it's for my own good. But that's not true. I know why he does it. Why? There's something going on. Something he doesn't want me to see. Something that... that isn't human. What do you mean, Miss Horton? I can't explain it, but... Well, I'm sure he murdered Jeff. I'm sure. 
There, there, now. What, uh, what makes you so sure, Julie? That night. The night Jeff was killed. Yes, go on. He sent me into the house. He was out there alone with Jeff. It was dark. Pitch dark. Go ahead, Julie. I heard their voices. My brother was shouting at Jeff. He said he'd kill him if he didn't get off the property. Uh, I think we'd better get her out of here, Sergeant. No, 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 I can't go. I can't. Why not, Julie? He'll follow me. He'll do to me what he did to Jeff. Sergeant, someone's coming, huh? I hear footsteps on the front porch. I could get her out the back way. Take her to the car and wait for me there. You know where it's back. The county road right at the entrance of the farm. Yes, yes. Well, come, my dear. No, no. No, I'm afraid. No, there's nothing to be afraid of. Everything's going to be all right. Julie. Julie, where are you? She's gone, Horton. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. Where's my sister? What have you done with her? I told you she's gone. Where is she? Answer me, where is she? You don't have to worry. She's safe. Safe? Safe? Tell me where she is. Take it easy, Horton. Take it easy. She's with Professor Taylor. We're going to take her away from here. You're going to take her away. (laughs) You're going to take her away. Over my dead body. Don't be a fool, Horton. Put that face down.
Thanks for listening to this week's Retro Radio, Old Time Radio in the Dark. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And if you like the show, please share it with someone you know who also loves Old Time Radio and Pulp Audio. If you want to hear even more, drop an email to WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com and get an instant reply with links to download full-length pulp audiobooks, pulp ebooks, and old-time radio shows absolutely free. That's WeirdDarkness at RadioArchives.com. I'm Darren Marlar. I'll see you next time for Retro Radio, old-time radio in the dark.